what's up everybody? Business Casual Isim here bringing you another video. This one going to be my tournament wrap up for GTX and I'm wearing this clothing because my brother just got married. You might know him as Nick Riddle so go follow him on Twitter even though he is Mr. Riddle now. But the show must go on here on YouTube.com slash I'm Isim so do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, blah blah blah, all the YouTube stuff because it really honestly does help. It's kind of stupid that it helps but it does help. So anyway, GTX was in Salt Lake City, Utah, the giant tournament that everyone was talking about. $30,000 pop bonus for singles, $2,000 pop bonus for doubles. It was was an amazing event. I entered Wii U singles and Wii U doubles, and so let's just go into my bracket. Round one, me and MVD, obviously my teammate, played Big Red and Atomic, and I honestly, I only remember one of these sets, and it was the one we played on stream against Double Corn, and I do not remember if that was round one or round two versus Oculidian and Snorhax, so one of you will be happy because I remembered you, and the other one will not, so sorry about that. And then after that, we lost to Locus and Cosmos. We played them at Shine, and that's just the theme of the tournament for me, is losing to the same people I was predicted to lose to at Shine. Uh, so I beat, so we, we won game one with Diddy Pika, and then we lost game two and three. Just sometimes we couldn't kill them, uh, but we did want the Diddy Kong because we rolled a control space. So I think it worked well, just not well enough to win. We had like those one or two times where we couldn't kill them. They got rage kills, and they, you know that was that was the set pretty much. So they won two one again. A very talented team. So it's not like it's a bad thing necessarily to lose to them, but we did lose to them. And then after that, we played against three XA and DSS being the Toon Link and Meta Knight main, but DSS in doubles actually went Ness, but we did two of them. I remember one of the games was close, one of the games was not, uh, so we won that to advance into top 16, where immediately we had to play against Legit and Exax, Legit being the NorCal Diddy, Exax being the NorCal Fox, one of the most underrated players in my opinion. Honestly, both of them are very underrated. Legit had a really good run at Smash Gun, but either way, both amazing players, but me and MVD were able to clutch it out 2-0 pretty solid. Uh, then after that, we played against Mr. R and Mr. E, who we had beat at Smash and Splash 3, and this was no different. Uh, obviously, the set was a bit different because it was 2 out of 3 as opposed to 3 out of 5. Game 1 was very close. Uh, MVD was going, he was Cloud, and he went for a punish on Mr. E's uh, up B, and, you know, because MVD shielded it, then got a finishing touch. It hit Mr. R and Mr. E, so we actually got two kills at like 65% or so, so that was kind of cool, and that game was relatively close. But game two was not. They counterpicked to FD. Uh, MVD went Diddy Kong, and so we were able to play the space game. You know, we got some kills early, and uh, at the end, I actually suicide killed, or I, I edgeguarded Mr. E, and then I tried to, like, prevent Mr. R from saving him, and I accidentally SD'd when I was literally at zero, but we still won the 2v1 uh, against Mr. R, so yay, that put us into top eight, where we immediately lost to Mars and Zenodo 3-2, an incredibly close set, Diddy Lucario, obviously, they were doing the Anubis strategy, much, much closer, I felt like, in my head than the Shine set, because, again, we did lose to them at Shine, so yay, losing to the same people, uh, but that was pretty much what happened, so we got seventh, very close set, I feel like we will beat them next time, same for, honestly, Locust Cosmos. It is raining really hard outside, so if you hear any like, it's the rain that's happening right over there, so sorry about that. But so yeah, we did get 7th place there at DTX, made a whopping $25 each, and now let us go on to singles, which was, uh, I feel like, for most of the main event. So, for once, I actually remember everyone in my pool, and I didn't even write it down. Round 1, I played against Bizarro Jam. I'm, like, I might have the order wrong, but I'm pretty sure this was the Roy main. Game 2 was actually pretty close, he got me to like 1 stock 40 on FD. Game 1 was kind of a wash. Next, I played Flare, and that was a a Corrin main and that was kind of bad. I was able to just get in, deal like a million percent, he tried to like neutral once and then I punished him for it, or like because I would just guess right and then killed him and that happened like pretty much every single stock that we played. After that I played against Keitaro and Keitaro high key deserved to win game one. It was like a kind of last hit scenario. I was at 90, he was at like 120 and he read my neutral getup with an up smash but because Pikachu is short, the constant hitbox of Falco's up smash, uh, you know, it's, it's technically a constant hitbox but there's two of them and so I actually got in between the hits because like the top of the first kick didn't hit me and so I was able to like shield grab and punish or like I either pun it or either like back through or I up smash I don't remember but that should have been the game for him I ended up winning that game and then game two was a bit more solid for me so I advanced to oh Kitaro honestly really good played the matchup incredibly well made it seem not as bad as it has been against every other Falco. Like, every other Falco I've played has been just, like, hands. But that was actually very challenging. And then after that, in the winner's finals of the pool, I played against Fallen's Rosalina. And this was the set that I realized I wasn't really playing super well uh, on Saturday, which is obviously the singles day, because I messed up a lot of things. I messed up really easy Luma kills. I messed up really easy punishes that I've been getting onto Buzz consistently. And it's not even like uh, Fallen's spacing was weird. It's just like, okay, this is a downer on my shield. I can punish this with up smash, get, like, walk forward, up tilt somehow. And I'm like, 
like, oh, well, this is good. Still 1-2-0. I was able to solid out some edge guards. Some I didn't make out on my up throw thunders. I read his DI correctly sometimes with down throw thunder. So I was able to win that 2-0 to advance into top 48 winners where I had to play Salem. And Salem, every single time I've played him, has been 3-2, or I either beat him 3-1 at UGC or I've lost 3-2 the other four times I've played him, I think. Uh, but this time was bad. Game one was kind of close, and then games two and three were very much not. He kind of bodied me. He was warmed up from Captain L in terms of the Pikachu matchup, as I mentioned. I kind of made some bad decisions. I flubbed a decent amount, like I missed probably six or seven up throw thunders. Uh, which obviously should not happen over the course of three games. So that was kind of unfortunate. I did, you know, and I, I, I guess I didn't realize quite how big witch time was sometimes because I'm like, okay, I'm going to forward air here just in case he's aggressive and if he witch times, it shouldn't hit me and then I died in 60 and uh, that was his lead. So that happened a lot that set. So I'm going to, I guess, be more careful when I play him at Big House if I beat Raito because that's my bracket again to Salem. So that happened and then immediately afterwards, I lost 3-1 to Zenodo. I actually haven't played Zenodo since the Midwest Mayhem that I lost to him at. But again, this was the set I really showed, like, I'm just playing bad because there was a lot, and anyone can say this, either the people watching, Zenodo himself or me, were like, wow, I missed, like, a lot of basic stuff. I was randomly dash attacking when I meant to, like, down air. I missed some really easy edge guards that wasn't even, like, I made the wrong decision, but, like, I didn't run off stage, and I got, like, jab, things like that. Like, it was, it was bad, and so I missed a lot of things. I still took a game, but that was off of him, like, messing up a barrel recovery, and he exploded on the side of the stage. Uh, like, I definitely did not deserve to win that set. I definitely did not deserve to place any better than 17th. Uh, you know, that's still pretty well considering how I played, but also me beating Fallen, you know, I'm really good at that matchup now, so even if I'm playing bad, I think I would still beat the majority of the Rosalinas. And so yeah, that is going to be the end of my tournament, but the tournament experience overall was amazing. First off, it was in a basketball arena, which I don't know what other people expected that to be. It was, of course, going to be amazing. The jumbotrons and like all the screens in the location were amazing. The layout was fantastic. Obviously, they had the $30,000 pop bonus for both singles games. Had a bunch of different events and a bunch of different side rooms. The VIP area was lit. Oh my god, the VIP area was so nice. It was actually the best thing about the tournament, like, that set it apart. Because, you know, we've had big arenas, or like big areas. Like, we've had the Genesis venues huge, the uh, EVA venues obviously huge, but this, you know, it was, it was more succinct in what it wanted to be. Like, it, it feel like the design of, or like the layout of the floor had a purpose. And it wasn't just to be efficient with people, but it was to make sure everyone saw the vendors, it was to make sure everyone could watch. It, everything about this event, I feel like, was so perfectly done except for the volunteers. It didn't seem like any of the volunteers knew what they were doing. I kind of ran half my pool, uh, but I feel like that's not really GTX's fault. It's just like, hey, if people don't volunteer, what are you gonna do, you know? Uh, so that was unfortunate, but that was literally the only thing bad. The matches, the quality of the matches were crazy. We had all those upsets. I'm so happy for both Darkshad and Elegant. You know, for Darkshad in particular, I've been a huge supporter of his since I first met him. You know, I love him and Grandshad traveling everywhere. And to beat Zero in pools, I think to be the first Ryu to beat Zero in bracket, and then to beat Nairo to get top eight, like his bracket, he, he that was a hard bracket. It was Zero into MVD, and both players have beat him a lot when they've played. I think they're like, I think I mean, he's like 4-1 on Dark Shadow. Obviously, I don't think Zero has ever lost to him. Then to lose 3-2 to Mr. R, and again, Mr. R is a very talented player, and then to beat Nairo 3-1, like that bracket, that's a crazy bracket to get top eight to then obviously lose to Zero the next day when Zero was a bit more composed, was able to study the matches, etc. But man, Darkshad played so well. The punish he got on Nairo after that down, like the weak fair, nair, drag down, up air, shorty, like that was... That was sick. He played so well this event, but obviously the main story of the event was Elegant beating Ally, beating uh, Nakat because Nakat beat Larry, beating Anti because Anti beat Tweak, beating uh, Leo 3 1, and then obviously the crazy game 10 last hit grand finals, just like Melee. It was insane. This tournament had arguably the best grand finals for both games in a very, very long time. Uh, you know, obviously, I think the other, the only other one that I could compare uh, the Smash 4 Finals to is Evo, but, like, it didn't have a Bayonetta or, like, it didn't have, like, one of the common characters in it, because, I mean, Cloud's common, I guess, but, you know, Leo hasn't been, like, super top, you know, he hasn't got, like, top two in a while, so it was really nice to see him there and obviously win. Elegant, you know, you've never seen a Luigi outside of, like, seventh place at a 2GG, uh, you know, at least since pre-patch days, so it was really refreshing to see that as grand finals of the set. Obviously, Melee had a more standard top eight, you know, pretty much without Leffen in it, and then add Drug Fox, so you had Plup do relatively well, you had Hbox win in a crazy fashion versus Armada, you had Mewtwo King in top three, Mango obviously wasn't there, but either way, the matches were amazing, the event was amazing, every single person that I talked to that worked for GTX seemed so 
so genuinely nice and like caring for the community it was actually ridiculous because like you know you expect some people to be fake with that type of thing like oh we're just gonna be nice because you're here but no like I was having like 30 to 45 minute long conversations with people and it was nothing but pleasant every single thing about that event coming from the weather to the venue to the people to the matches everything other than the volunteers was like a perfect like 11 out of 10 and I cannot recommend it more highly if it happens next year and I really really hope it does and yeah that is going to be about it for this one I hope you all enjoyed as always social media panda and partner stuff is down below uh, so I actually I know I said I was gonna finish the Pikachu guide before October but uh, obviously GTX happened and I've been really practicing because I want to do better at Big House and I'm really once Big House is over I'm going to be editing it a lot next week like actually actually like it's gonna be like Big House wrap up no other videos till the Pikachu guide so look out for that probably like next Friday or Saturday at least the combo section the edge guarding I haven't even started recording that's gonna be really interesting to do but now that I have the training mode mods I can do that so definitely that video will be coming out GTX was fantastic and I will see you all next time oh, bye, -bye.